so we're in like, I guess we're now in year three of Scott, like Bo Pelini. It wasn't that long ago. that Bo Pelini was the head coach of Nebraska. It feels like forever ago. I have a question. It, this is kind of one of these things like we, we, we wish you know, we, we could reach out to the guy asking the question. Do we have to take the, the subsequent hire with, with the fire? <laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously that's the biggest problem is the, is, is the hiring. Cause if you're firing, it doesn't matter who you're firing. If you hire a stud, like you're, you're probably gonna be okay. And they yeah. did not hire studs on either step. Callahan was, was really kind of a disaster there. He, uh, for a couple of different things. Number one, this is back, I think, before we as a media and certainly Nebraska's fan base understood just how long it took to transition from a, any sort of like option style offense to a like a pro style passing offense. We're, we're seeing this at Georgia Tech now, but now we know, right? This is a legitimate multi year process before you can even get decent. Like, I don't think Georgia Tech's passing game is going to be good this year at all, I, but it may not be quite as terrible as it was last year. So I don't think people understood that. Then Callahan, it seems, really didn't dumb it down all that much, and his playbook was enormous, and he was kind of – we saw this a couple times in the late 90s, early 2000s, where, like, these NFL guys came down and they tried to install, like, their entire NFL playbook, and the college kids were like, what? And then Nebraska kids were like, double what? Because, you know, they were triple option kids at their core. It was not quite as easy to get guys to pitch the ball around that much, I think, especially in, like, a – West like a true NFL style West Coast offense back then, and uh, he also didn't do the best job of recruiting. So, I if we have to take the the subsequent hiring with the firing, I'm I'm going to go with Solich because I think the Callahan hire set them back more than the Pelini fire and uh, Mike Riley hire. All right, so don't take the firing. Does that change your answer? You 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 just get a fresh slate. You get you 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 make the, the the coaching change and you get a fresh slate. You can hire anyone you want uh, without the uh, without the benefit of hindsight. So, I mean, do we really think Frank Solich was going to keep this thing rolling? Sorry. So here's okay. So here's my thing. Like, I, I think when I look back on it, I like Frank Solich. That Joker's still coaching. Like he's been putting together, like division contending teams in the Mac for 15 years. And they were going to win the Mac this year, I think. I was I was all on board with Ohio. So like and and I do think it's worth thinking about I mean Bo Pelini was I do think players loved him, players like playing for him, but he was sort of an asshole and he was and like it, I don't know that plus the stuff with his brother was it, was that stuff already popping off or was that uh, I think it was like once he got there, I believe. So I just think that there's probably enough. Like I get like when, when people are like, well, you should have stuck with what you, what you knew. Like you should like care for what you wish for eight wins, nine wins. Like I, I understand when a fan base is tired of the same thing. And I, I mean, look, I, I, I have sympathy and empathy for a coaching staff that's rattling off eight or nine wins a year and gets fired because they're not winning national titles. But I also, a fan base, especially a place with the tradition of Nebraska that just can't seem to get over the hump. Like, I, I think, like, look look what's happened at Georgia. Like, Georgia is now where they want to be. I know they haven't won the national championship yet, but, like, they're contending and doing what they need to do to get there. And and Mark Rick was a Bo Pelini type of guy in terms of the success he was having and, and like, what, what, where, what tier he had Georgia working on. And, and that was, I think that that was the right play. And I think it's okay to go back and, and, and understand like you're taking a little bit of a shot when you're, when you're pulling the plug on a guy that's having some consistent success, especially when he's not, when he's not like the fit around the university culturally that you wanted to be. I think Frank Solich could have kept that thing rolling and, and just, you know, maybe he's still, because look, Frank Solis didn't run into the dang wishbone right now. Like coaches evolve and the, the offense would have started to look a little bit more modern. And I, I I'm sort of surprised to hear myself land on this answer, but um, I, I kind of suspect that Frank Solich was the guy that, that could have, you know, he could, he could have kept it 
you know, that maybe the maybe the lows are a little lower than they were with Tom Osborne, but but I bet you could have still gotten some pretty good highs. I also just for the good of our sport, I don't want to criticize a team that is doing good for attempting to do great, right? And and like that, yes, it's extremely boring to go eight and four, nine and three every year if you're a team that has a national title or two. To its history, and Nebraska certainly more, you know, has more than just a title or two. Now, it may not be well advised, right? Should Minnesota have fired Glenn Mason when, when he was consistently getting them to bowls? Like he was getting them to bowls by Halloween every year. And know who you are, like right? Know who you are. <laughs> like the, 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 then they replaced him, obviously, and it, it really, really didn't work out. And it, it took him a while to dig out of that hole. But like if Duke can go, Duke can go, like you know, four wins for the next four years, and like. David Cutcliffe is still like he had them competitive for a long enough time. Like that, that he should get some some rope for that. Pat Fitzgerald, right. he should get some rope. Like these these schools that are tough to win at, like take tough to win and take tough to win records. But if you're Nebraska and you're coming off, like you know what national titles taste like, like I think it's okay to want yeah. more. Hell, the school that David Cut- Cutcliffe was at, like I actually think Ole Miss was pretty stupid for, for, for firing him. Like if yeah. you are, if you're making bowls by by Halloween at Ole Miss. Or Minnesota, let's go ahead and stick with that. That guy is probably doing a better job than you, the fan base, realizes. And I'm not trying to chastise, uh, but I really don't have a huge problem with them firing either, even if I did have my doubts about their ability, especially at post Polini, to get to where they want to go. I, in fact, I, I think I probably wrote like the odds that they improve over Polini are not as good as the odds that they, you know, go down some. Uh, but I can't fault them for chasing it. It's not like they've fallen off a, a ton. I mean, they're they're not that far away from going eight and four, nine and three most years. Except now that you're playing nine Big Ten games in a season, in a normal season, obviously you were having to play Michigan, Ohio State, Penn State more often than you otherwise would have back when they only played eight games. 